You are a fool. You are a separate event. And you run from the maternity ward to the crematorium, and that's it, baby. That's it. Now, why does anybody think that way? There's no reason to, because it isn't even scientific. It's just a myth. And it's invented by people who wanted to feel a certain way. They want to play a certain game. See, the game of God got, in, got embarrassing. The, the idea of God as the potter, the architect of the universe, is, is, is good. And it makes you feel that life is, after all, important. There is someone who cares. It has meaning, it has sense, and you are valuable in the eyes of the Father. But after a while, it gets embarrassing. And you realize that everything you do is being watched by God. He knows your tiniest, inmost feelings and thoughts, and you say after a while, quit bugging me. <laughs> I don't want you around. So you become an atheist just to get rid of it. Then, then you feel terrible after that because you got rid of God, but that means you got rid of yourself. You're just nothing but a machine. And your idea that you're a machine is just a machine too. So if you're a smart kid, you commit suicide. Camus said there is only really one serious philosophical question, which is whether or not to commit suicide. I think there are four or five serious philosophical questions. <laughs> the first one is, who started it? The second is, are we going to make it? The third is, where are we going to put it? The fourth is, who's going to clean up? <laughs> and the fifth, is it serious? <laughs> but, but still, uh, should you or not commit suicide? This is a good question. Why go on? And you only go on if the game is worth the candle. Now the universe has been going on for an incredible long time. And so really, a, a satisfactory theory of the universe has to be one that's worth betting on. That's a very, it seems to me, absolutely elementary common sense. If you make a theory of the universe which isn't worth betting on, why bother? Just commit suicide. But if you want to go on playing the game, you've got to have an optimal theory for playing the game. Otherwise, there's no point in it. But the people who coined the fully automatic theory of the universe were playing a very funny game. What they wanted to say was this, all you people who believe in religion are old ladies and wishful thinkers. You've got a big daddy up there and you want a comfort and thing, but life is rough. Life is tough and uh, success goes to the most hard-headed people. That was a very convenient theory when the European-American world was colonizing the natives everywhere else. They said, we are the end product of evolution and uh, we are tough, see. I'm a big strong guy because I face facts and life is just a bunch of junk and I'm going to impose my will on it and turn it into something else, you see. And I'm real hard. See, that's a way of flattering yourself. And so, uh, it has become academically plausible and fashionable that this is the way the world works. In academic circles, no other theory of the world than the fully automatic model is respectable. Because if you're an academic person, You've got to be an intellectually tough person. You've got to be prickly. See, there are basically two kinds of philosophy. One's called prickles, the other's called goo. And uh, prickly people are precise, rigorous, logical. They like everything chopped up and clear. Goo people like it vague. So, for example, in physics, prickly people believe that the ultimate constituents of matter are particles. Goo people believe it's waves. And uh, in, in uh, philosophy, prickly people are logical positivists and goo people are idealists. And they're always arguing with each other. 
And what they don't realize is that they, neither one can take his position without the other person. Because you wouldn't know you advocated prickles unless there was somebody else advocating goo. <laughs> you wouldn't know what a prickle was unless you knew what goo was. Because life is not either prickles or goo. It's gooey prickles and prickly goo. <laughs> and they go together like back and front, male and female. And that's the answer to philosophy. See, I'm a philosopher. And I'm not going to argue very much because if you don't argue with me, I don't know what I think. <laughs> so if we argue, I say thank you. Because though, going to the courtesy of your taking a different point of view, I understand what I mean. So I can't get rid of you. But however, you see, this whole idea that the universe is just nothing at all but unintelligent force playing around and not even enjoying it is a put-down theory of the world. People who had a, an advantage to make a game to play by putting it down and making out that because they put the world down, they were a superior kind of people. So uh, that just won't do. Uh, we've had it. Because if, if you seriously go along with this idea of the world, you are what is technically called alienated. You feel hostile to the world. You feel that the world is a trap. It is a, a mechanism. It's electronic and neurological uh, mechanisms into which you somehow got caught. And you, poor thing, have to put up with being in a body that's falling apart and uh, that gets cancer, that gets... Uh, uh, the great Siberian itch, and uh, it's just terrible. And these mechanics doctors are trying to help you out, but they really can't succeed in the end. And you're just going to fall apart, and it's a grim business, and it's too bad. So if you think that that's the way things are, you may as well commit suicide right now. 